False positives and true negatives. Binary classification in math mathematics or the mathematics of truth. The purpose of this video is to 1. Show how the ancient African goddess Ma'at, representative of the philosophical concept of truth, is determined through binary classification and Boolean algebra in the field of mathematics. 2. Promote data literacy, a fundamental skill which underpins modern scientific literacy. 3. Define and explain the statistical concepts of false positives, true negatives, true positives, false negatives, type 1 errors, type 2 errors, sensitivity, specificity, and odds ratio. 4. Demonstrate the use of a truth table or confusion matrix in binary classification and Boolean algebra. 5. Explain how false positives and false negatives impact scientific conclusions. And 6. Provide practical examples and usage cases. Introduction. Truth is a measure of how well something abstract or rational accurately reflects something concrete or empirical. For example, truth is a measure of how well your thoughts and beliefs accurately reflect reality, or as another example, how well your words accurately reflect your actions. The ancient Africans in Egypt personified truth in the form of a goddess named Ma'at, and falsehood was called Isfet and was embodied by a deity depicted as a coiled serpent named Apep. In the mythology of ancient Egypt, it was said that in the underworld, the heart of the deceased was weighed against a feather on the scales of Ma'at, or the scales of truth. The ancient Egyptians believed that the heart, rather than the brain, was the source of a person's mind, wisdom, logic, and reason, which is why, in the Memphite theology, it is said that Ptah imagined in his heart before speaking with his tongue, because they believed that the heart was the source of the mind and imagination. And even to this very day, we say colloquially that we associate feelings with our heart, when in actuality, scientifically, we experience feelings in our brain. The ancient Egyptian image of the scales of Ma'at weighing the heart against the feather could be seen as a symbolic tool used to express the idea that truth is a measure of how well the contents of your mind, i.e. your thoughts and beliefs, accurately reflect reality. In binary classification in Boolean algebra, one symbolic mathematical tool used to determine truth is a 2x2 two two matrix called a truth table, also known as a confusion matrix in machine learning and statistics. The two dimensions of the truth table are your mind and reality or you can say the abstract and the concrete, or the rational and the empirical, respectively. As we live our lives every day, we are constantly taking in information, experiencing evidence, making observations, and gathering data. And, our mind operates as a metaphorical lie detector, filtering and classifying the information as something you reject as false, i.e. something that you do not believe, or something that you accept as true, something that you do believe. And just like a dichotomy exists in the rational world of the mind of information that is either rejected or accepted, a similar dichotomy exists in the empirical world as information that is fake and information that is actually real. With the rational dichotomy of reject or accept and the empirical dichotomy of fake or real, then we can fill the two by two truth table to identify the instances when we are able to determine truth. If we encounter information that is actually fake, and our mind rejects the information as falsehood, then this is an example of a true positive, an instance where our mind has made a correct determination in rejecting falsehood. However, if we encounter information that is actually real, and our mind rejects the information, then this is an example of a false positive, because our mind has made an incorrect determination and has rejected reality. If we encounter information that is actually real, and our mind accepts the information, then this is an example of a true negative, and another instance where our mind has made a correct determination in accepting reality. However, if we encounter information that is actually fake, and our mind accepts the information, then this is an example of a false negative, because our mind has made an incorrect determination to accept falsehood. There are four conditions of the truth table that can be taken as the input to the digital logic gate called an exclusive NOR, also called an XNOR. And we can see from the Boolean algebra that truth is determined in the cases of a true positive or a true negative, and falsehood is determined in the cases of a false positive or a false negative. This is also known in logic and mathematics as logical biconditional, represented by the Venn diagram where both the intersection of the two sets and the complement of the union of the two sets are shaded. In statistics, the four conditions of the truth table are described with special terminology. For the two conditions of the truth table that correspond with falsehood, a type 2 error is used to refer to a false negative, 
that is accepting something that is actually fake. A type 1 error is used to refer to a false positive, that is rejecting something that is actually true. During the pandemic, we may have frequently heard the term false positive used to refer to errors related to people who tested positive but in reality did not have the disease, or in clinical trials of vaccines where people given the vaccine show some immunity to the disease that was not induced by the vaccine itself. For the two conditions from the truth table that correspond with being correct or finding the truth, the term sensitivity is used to refer to the true positive rate, that is the probability of not believing or rejecting something that is false. This is defined as the true positives divided by the sum of the true positives plus the false negatives. And the term specificity is used to refer to the true negative rate, that is the probability of believing, predicting, or accepting something that is actually true which is given by the equation the true negatives divided by the true negatives plus the false positives. Type 1 error can also be calculated as 1 minus specificity and type 2 error can also be calculated as 1 minus sensitivity. Additionally, the odds of rejecting falsehood versus accepting falsehood can be calculated as the true positives divided by the false positives given by the equation TP divided by FN and the odds of rejecting truth versus accepting truth can be calculated as the false positives divided by the true negatives given by the equation FP divided by TN. And thus, the diagnostic odds ratio, which measures the effectiveness of being able to determine truth and falsehood, can be calculated as a ratio of the aforementioned odds ratios, given the final equation of true positives times true negatives divided by false positives times false negatives. The diagnostic odds ratio is useful for conducting meta-analysis. If the diagnostic odds ratio is greater than 1, then the two events are positively correlated. If the diagnostic odds ratio is less than 1, then the two events are negatively correlated. If the diagnostic odds ratio equals 1, then the two events are independent. And lastly, accuracy can be calculated as the sum of the true positives plus the true negatives divided by the sum of all true positives plus false positives plus true negatives plus false negatives. With our mind operating as a metaphorical lie detector, filtering and classifying information, if we are too sensitive, then we end up rejecting everything as false. However, if we are too specific, then we will end up accepting everything as true. Therefore, there is a trade-off between sensitivity and specificity. Sensitivity and specificity exist in an inverse relationship. As sensitivity decreases, specificity increases, and as specificity decreases, sensitivity increases. So ideally, we would want to have a balance between sensitivity and specificity in order to find truth. So let's look at a few examples. First, let's examine the famous fable from the Ethiopian storyteller named Aesop called The Boy Who Cried Wolf. As the fable goes, a shepherd boy repeatedly tricks the people of his village, claiming that a wolf is attacking. So the villagers rush to his aid, only to find that the boy was playing a trick on them. Then, after the boy plays the trick on the villagers several times, a real wolf actually attacks. But the villagers do not believe him, thinking it is another false alarm, and do not come to help. And so the wolf eats the sheep. In the cases where the boy's trick was successful, when the wolf attack was fake, but the villagers believe him, those were cases of false negatives, type 2 errors, where you accept falsehood. In the case where the wolf attack was real, but the villagers did not believe the boy, that was a case of a false positive, a type 1 error, where you reject the truth. This story illustrates the detrimental outcome that can result from making these type of errors. In the case of the boy who cried wolf, if the sample size is small, let's say 4 statements, and 3 of the 4 statements the boy lied, and only one of the four statements the boy told the truth, then it is fair to say that the boy is a liar because he lied 75% of the time. But how many statements had the boy made in the past prior to the trick? 100 statements? 1,000 statements? A million statements? And how many times did the boy tell the truth in the past which made the villagers want to accept what he was saying was the truth when he was playing the trick. What happens when sample sizes get larger? The truth table can be used in these instances also. Next, let's take a look at the example mentioned earlier of people testing for the existence of a disease. Let's say you have a sample of 100 people, and 10 of the 100 people actually have the disease, and 90 of the 100 people do not have the disease. Of the 10 people who actually have the disease, 
nine people test positive for the disease, the true positives, and one person tests negative for the disease, the false negatives. Of the 90 people who do not have the disease, 81 people test negative, the true negatives, but nine people test positive, the false positive. From this example, we can see that the error results in trying to characterize a sample of data with just a few observations. No data point from a single cell in the truth table can be used alone to correctly characterize the sample population without error. The same error occurs when you attempt to characterize an entire group of people like a community or a religious group based on the actions of a small minority within the group. The conclusion will be fraught with error and not truth. Imagine if you took a test in school with 10 questions on the test and got two questions wrong. Is it right for you to be characterized by the two questions you got wrong or the eight questions you got right? Lastly, let's look at a scenario called Pascal's Wager, named after the French mathematician for whom Pascal's Triangle is also named. Pascal's Wager posits that human beings wager their lives, that God exists or does not exist, and concludes with an argument for why it is more rational to believe in God than to not believe in God. Pascal's Wager compares two dichotomies of if God exists or not to whether or not you believe in God or not. From the truth table, if God does not exist, and you reject the existence of God, then that means you are right. And the outcome for this scenario is being ostracized by religious people in society, but also having the time and money you save by not worshiping a God that does not exist. If God does not exist, and you believe in God, then that means that you are wrong. And the outcome for this scenario is the loss of time and money spent worshiping something that does not exist. If God exists, and you reject the existence of God, then that means you are wrong. And the outcome for this scenario is eternal suffering as the punishment by God. However, if God exists and you believe in God, then that means you are right. And the outcome for this scenario is eternal blessings as your reward by God. Pascal's conclusion was that a rational person should live as though God exists and seek to believe in God. Because if God does not exist, such a person will only have a finite loss some pleasures, luxury, etc., whereas if God does exist, the person stands to receive eternal paradise and avoid an eternity of suffering in hell. And, I will add, that if the God you choose to believe in is Ma'at, the African goddess of truth, with associations to mathematics, then the reward you receive through her worship is being able to determine truth through mathematics as illustrated in this video.